Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Maya. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be talking to you. I know a lot of followers are big fans of yours, so they're really uh, excited that you're, you're giving me this opportunity to ask you some questions. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Well, I just wanted to say congratulations on your release of Burn. Um, Thank how you does it feel so to much. Finally, how does it feel to finally share the book with everybody? Oh, uh, I've, been, I've been waiting for it since I started writing the books. Um, you know, I, I'm, in, I'm impatient. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, and I, I love, you know, I'm impatient as a reader, as an author, you know, I want to get the books to my readers, you know, as soon as possible. So, you know, it's kind of hard to believe in one way that the trilogy is done now and that's mm -hmm. almost kind of a letdown, but, you know, I'm always working on something new anyway, so it's not like it ever ends for me, but, you know, it is kind of bittersweet because, you know, Burn released yesterday, and it is the last book, you know, in that trilogy. So saying goodbye to that set of characters is always, you know, a little hard. Well, it was hard for me, too. So <laughs> to finally know that that was it, that that was the last I was going to hear from them. Um, actually, Ash turned out to be my favorite of the three men, which kind of surprised me because in reading the first two, he kind of always seemed like aloof, um, kind of how he described himself, very laid back. And he even said that even his friend's perception of him was wrong. Yes. Why? Why did you? Uh, why did you have him keep his, I guess, true self hidden? I guess from, from even his friends. Well, you know, because, it, and and I really gave this a lot of thought because you know how well do you really know anybody? You know, even someone you're close to, everyone holds back a part of themselves. It's very rare that you know absolutely everything there is to know about someone no matter how close you are whether it's your mother you know your husband your wife and you know I've known people like Ash that on the surface they seemed very laid back very affable you know very easygoing and but in reality they they were a very intense um, you know passionate you know, darker person. And I knew from day one that that was Ash, that he had a look that was deceiving about him because, you know, he had kind of muddy blonde hair, he had green eyes, he, he just looked like he would be charming and he could be very charming. But I knew that when readers finally got to get inside his head and see the world from his perspective, that they would understand his character a lot more and realize, and I said, you know, I said this before, you know, Burn ever released, I, you know, I told readers that Ash was even a more intense character than Gabe and Jace, that, you know, he has hidden depths and he, he feels things, you know, he feels things very differently. He's, he's a, um, he's a very passionate person and when he does give his loyalty to someone which he doesn't just give to everybody but when he makes that commitment they get 100 percent of him and that's who Ash is he's very passionate and very loyal and very intense is that why you chose to make him the last the last book yes well it, and it made sense because I knew that Gabe was going to be the first because you know, he was going to have a relationship with Jace's sister. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that story had to come first. And I knew that Ash and Jace, in the beginning of Jace's book, were going to have a threesome with the woman that Jace was going to end up with. And I knew that it was going to cause their friendship some problems and put a strain on their relationship. So mm -hmm. it, he had to be last in order for all of those other things to fall into place because it wouldn't have been the same trilogy if he would have been first because exactly. you wouldn't have gotten to see him through the first two books and gotten those hints at his you know deeper personality and that maybe he wasn't exactly as he appeared to others you know so I think it built more anticipation for his story you know since you got to see him and meet him in the first you know two books absolutely and I think it was a great way to end the series as well with him oh well good um, I'm, I'm glad you approved really well. <laughs> Um, well, each of the three men, Jace, um, Gabe, and Ash, they're, they, they're similar in that they're dominant alpha males, I guess, if we want to give them a broad category to fit into. But they each were very different, and, um, and they each had their own individ individuality. How are you able to keep these three men's voices different when writing them because, and not just make them sound all the same, being that they are 
similar. In, yeah. In well, because aspects. you know, characters. When I'm writing a book, they're very much alive in my head. You know, I can, mm -hmm. I even read dialogue out loud to myself because I'm very super picky about how it sounds. You know, and, you know, I, I translate that into the way I write the dialogue because I want to give them a different voice. I want to give them a different sound. And in fact, I want a reader to know when they read a line of dialogue without even seeing the tag of who said it, I want them to be able to identify who said that. You know, if you, if you delve that deep into characterization and make, you know, them unique enough, a reader will know without seeing the proof of who's speaking. They'll know right away, oh, that's Jace talking, or the, oh, that's Ash talking. And it's in, you know, like I said, they're unique to me. They are, you know, very different characters in my head. And so it's actually really easy to write them because I just write them the way I see them in my head. And since they are very three different, unique individuals, you know, it's not that difficult to translate that, you know, onto paper because I'm just telling their story. And I think you did the same with um, the females too, with Mia, Bethany, and Josie in in, in these books too. They, they, not that they needed saving, but they had, um, they fit very well with each each of the three men. And their, but each of their backstories were very different from one another. Yes, yes. So you kind of just did the same thing with them. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. So what are, now that the Breathless Trilogy is done, what are you working on next? Um, well, I have um, Culture's Gift, which is releasing in November, which is, you know, already written. And then I have the eighth KGI book, um, After the Storm, which releases at the end of December. And then I have a new trilogy coming out uh, in 2014 called the Surrender Trilogy. And I will be posting um, more information for readers the week of August 19th. So you can check out my uh, website and Facebook and I'll be tweeting about it uh, because I will be posting covers, blurbs, and release dates for that new trilogy. It's gonna follow a very similar publication pattern of the Breathless Trilogy so readers can look forward to getting all three of those books in 2014. So they, they're gonna be released close together like the Breathless Trilogy was so you won't have to wait a long time between releases. Well, I look forward to that. And I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, I, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I know you're limited in time, but I just want to say thank you so much. And Burn was probably my favorite book of this series. It was no, so I'm good. So I'm so glad you enjoyed sad. it. Thank you so yes. much.